Alrighty then. Messing around with the chat, see if I can make it show up and do the things that I wanted it to. It wasn't, but hi, I've shaved my beard down, kept the next stuff, because, well, spoons is why. And we'll talk about spoon theory in our, some of the stuff today. What's up, Yesh? Hello. Yeah, check, 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 all the different things. I was messing around with um, chat, where it was supposed to pop up on screen when you write. So it was gonna be like, test. And uh, it hasn't been popping up right here. That's the sad part. But it has been making a bunch of music and all my other hotkeys activate. So that's what I was trying to do and make happen. Oh my gosh. I can like see, oh, I have an idea. I have an idea of what could happen to it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If I... There it is. It's at the top. I don't know why it's up there. But you know what, it's... There it is, living up, up, up high. I'm gonna just put it right... Oh, let's do that. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so we'll mess around with that to see if we can get to work. Um, yeah, we'll just see how that goes. It's supposed to disappear and stuff, too. Uh, but today's conversation isn't necessarily about intelligence being weird. Today's, in fact, is going to be about what's known as spoon theory. We're also going to be talking about willpower. That'll be our lecture. And our challenge for the day is going to be a very silly challenge. I, uh, gosh, I'm excited to do it because when I say silly, I mean silly. Silly and the most silly. You can see in the center of the screen at the moment a wheel. And if I was to click that wheel, spin, 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 what do we get? Oh, rocket launch. Oh, it's crossbow. It's going to crossbow. We got the weapon that we use. <laughs> it has little fireworks as well. So I'm excited to be running around and messing with this. And let me do a thing to make the chat easier. Spoon. Oh, I love it. Hell yeah. Spoons are awesome. Um, how, do I, how, do I make, how do I make this the way that I want it to go? I want it to go like this. Nice. And I want this to go like this. Come on. Come on. Yes. Good. See, it's starting to show. Starting to show. Okay. Eh? 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 <laughs> Perfect. Beautiful. Spin! <laughs> So spoon theory is all about this idea of willpower and personality and how a person can feel and choose. Oh, I need to make this a little bit bigger if we're going to catch the LMG stuff. Uh, uh, there we go. Now I'll just pull this down again. We'll see if we can make this work. If it can't work, it's uh, we'll just put it aside for a bit. But that's fine. Let's play some video games. That sounds like a nice thing to do. I was trying to fix uh, the SMG. Yes, exactly. What's up, Stadia? Uh, I was trying to fix the... Oh, look! He showed up. He showed up in the corner right there. Why does it work sometimes? I don't know. <laughs> sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Can't be long here long. Okay. All right. You know what? Yes, let's do the lecture real quick then. And then we can play games because luckily the lecture is fast and it's smart. And I want to make sure you can hear it. And then we can not necessarily rock it out specifically immediately in Plunder Trios, but we'll have fun with it, all right? Okay, lecture time. This play... All right, fine, do a playlist update. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll do the lecture conversation. So, um, boom. Let's talk about spoon theory. So the idea of spoon theory is basically the subject of... Well, it kind of comes from a sad place. Uh, basically the idea is like if you were to wake up in the morning and you're like, all right, what am I going to do today? Uh, I guess I'm going to get dressed and you know, that costs a spoon and you're like, okay, I guess I'm going to make breakfast and that costs a spoon. I'm like, am I going to put the dishes away? Well, that's going to cost some spoons. And the idea is that a spoon is a quantifiable chunk of energy that you use as an indicator for how much energy you have for the day. And it's generally relied around people with chronic illness. So the idea is like if you're suffering from, like let's say you, whatever the chronic illness could be, it takes more energy for you to do the basic things of your day than it does someone who doesn't suffer from a chronic illness. Simple as like, oh, if you're missing a leg, right? You have to put on your other leg or get into your wheelchair or deal with stairs. You know, these things that 
are not necessarily as difficult for somebody who doesn't have to deal with that kind of thing. And so it costs more spoons for you to do anything. Now, everybody has a certain number of spoons. Chronic pain as well as Astadia, exactly. Everybody has a certain number of spoons that they have. It could be personal where it's like, you have a bazillion spoons or you have 10 spoons and maybe the cost of the spoon is a little different for you where it costs you a million spoons if you're the person with a bazillion spoons or it costs you one spoon if you are a person with 10. It really doesn't matter the numbers. The idea is that the spoon system is personal to you. So you have a spoon and you're like, all right, what am I gonna do for my homework today? Okay, this spoon is gonna be that cost for that. And eventually you run out of spoons. Yeah, she's excited about foots, of course you are. So whatever that thing is, you only have that limited number of spoons. So if you have 20 spoons and you're able to get everything done today because you had 20 spoons and had leftover spoons, that's awesome. But if for whatever reason it cost you 10 spoons and you only had seven spoons that day, you can't be upset at yourself for not having all the spoons. Because naturally every human being is not a robot. We don't have an exact same experience every day we wake up because we have hormones, we have weather, we have food, we have whatever, emotions, <laughs> like it happens. So our spoon count varies. Now, what's interesting about this is you can see spoons showing up in things known as like decision fatigue. Decision fatigue is a well-documented problem that shows up for people who have to make big decisions all the time. So like, what's your favorite color? Not necessarily a hard thing. What isn't your favorite color? Not necessarily a hard thing. But if you had to answer a ton of questions all like all day, in fact, um, uh, President Obama once described the idea that he wanted to have a business where he just sold a medium t-shirt that's white. He's like, that's it, that's I, nothing else, no other decisions. And the whole joke was that it was just took so much time and energy, a sm so many spoons, as Yesh is putting out, in order to make decisions. But people make worse decisions over the course of the day. If you had to make decisions all day at your job and then you have to decide what to eat for dinner, that is hard. Willpower works the same way. If you had to be at your job the whole day, giving out spoons constantly, gotta get a spoon to go to work, gotta get a spoon to shower, gotta get a spoon to not honk at the guy in front of me, gotta get a spoon to drive through the traffic, gotta put a spoon in order to focus on my work. And you get home, you got no more spoons, and you're just like, I don't know, I'm gonna sit down and die. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna fall asleep. I'm just gonna stop trying right now. And the idea is where you see people like, Exercising requires spoons for some people. And this is where you see things where people are like, hey, let's find a way to make exercise not cost as many spoons or make it fun so it doesn't really need spoons. And this process of spoon amounts is shown up or not mathematically, but in, this is, this is what I really like. Okay, this is what gets me excited about this. Um, the idea is that when people track hours of time, you're able to basically track success of something. So if you're like, it's gonna take me 10 hours, and then you later do that thing, and you see how many hours it took you to do that thing, you can track how long it took you to do that thing. When I worked at Monolith Productions, this was a thing that people did. They would track their hours after coming up with expectations on how many hours it take them to do that thing. Now this data aligns with other data that I included in the description below from Gama Sutra, which is basically research on how people do processes in game design. It was specifically discussed in If Crunch, which is the process in games where you work way more hours than you do in a normal day to get a game done, If Crunch works. Because they're like, hey, we have to, you know, you're supposed to work an eight hour day, right? Well, now you have to work 10 or 12 hour days to get this game done. Is that an effective method to make the money to finish the game? Well, this is what the data was that found out happened. Let's see, like 10 hours for 10 chapter and five hours for 10 chapter. Uh, I don't know, Yesh, perhaps. But here, let me, let me give you an example that might help with that. So in a normal eight hour day, right? It turns out that's not actually what human beings have. A normal eight hour day is actually six and a half hours. Uh, and if you look through the data, you'll see it coming out that way where humans don't actually get eight hours of work done in an eight hour day because, well, you go to the bathroom, you stretch, oh, I'm tired. You know, you talk to someone for, you know, how's your friend? Oh, they're good, let go. You, you're running and doing those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, like just normal interactions. Costs time. Normally costs about an hour and a half. So you really only have about six and a half hours of time. Second, lunch should take an hour. And in fact, lunch normally does because even when you're eating at your desk, you're not as efficient and effective as if you are just resting and then going back to work because it takes time to put yourself in, it's spooning. You require spoons in order to manage that. So if you do that process, it is still not as effective. It just takes an hour out of your day. 
The next bit is that each hour that you work is about 50 to an hour or 10 minutes, right? So 50 to 70 minutes. That's about how everybody's hour looks. And when you complete that, then you have about a 20 minute break. And you should, because if you don't, it's like sprinting as hard as you can and then still sprinting and be like, why am I not going faster? So you need to take a break. That's how brains work, that's how bodies work. Again, data and facts, all included in the research down below in the description. So what ends up happening is if we average it to about an hour a day, uh, in that six and a half hours of time, talk out another hour for that lunch. So you really have five and a half hours in your day. And then you go, all right, so one hour, cool, then break. All right, then one hour, cool, then break. Well, that's already about two and a half hours right there. One hour, break, one hour, break. It turns out that you end up working about four chunks of core hours of time with about an hour and 20 minutes-ish of time broken. Basically that five and a half hours, four hours of hard work time in that, the rest of it is breaks. Every day, human beings only have about four hours of work. If you have a meeting, that chucks into that. If you have to do anything else, chucks into that. In about an eight hour period of time, you can only get about four hours of work done at peak efficiency, at perfect spoon sharing. We need a break. Human beings need breaks. What's interesting is that through the evidence, that's peak efficiency. If you are not taking your breaks, if you are not doing those things, you're actually taking up more potential time. Crunch talks about the idea of working 10 hours or 12 hours of time in order to try to speed up being like, okay, if I can get eight hours of work done in a day, if I work 10 hours, I'll get two hours extra done every day. Human beings don't do that. And that's what has been discovered in a lot of this research related to crunch. Basically what happens is that people will work longer for a period of time about nine days. So if you did about 10 hours of work in an eight hour day, which isn't you know actually correct, right? Because of how you have to take breaks. I like the comments of like, add efficiency five, just add in the efficiency says yes, exactly. So the idea is that when you have that extra eight hours and then you pop it to 10, you can actually work those extra two hours and make more time for about nine days in the research. But once you hit the 10th day, the person does about eight hours of work in 10 hours. When you hit the 11th day, that person does about seven and a half hours of work in the eight hours, quote unquote. Basically, it's they start lowering beneath the period of time. Eventually, if you've done this for two weeks, you are working less quality, like making less productivity in a period of 10 hours than you would if you just maintained a normal period of time. Crunch should work then unless they're generating more spoons at the cost of more hours. <laughs> yeah, actually spoons per hour is basically Crunch should only work if you can generate spoons coming up, but that's the only way to generate spoons is to rest. And there's only so much time you can rest and generate spoons in the day. You can make other tools that lower the cost of the spoons, and there's a lot of research and success like computers that does that. But it's not something that we can just make happen in our lives. Now, this is not something that necessarily applies to every job, right? Like if you're picking up trash, well, that doesn't necessarily mean you'll pick up trash faster if you work less kind of thing, right? But there is a degree where, yeah, there's somewhere in there where you're just sort of tired after your day, right? Like another thing to consider too, is if people are told to get something done as opposed to do it for a period of number of hours, you might get like a park cleaned faster if you were able to leave sooner, if you got it done, right? These all different things are important to consider when we talk about things in regards to the spoon theory. Basically, it takes effort to do things. Use the number of spoons you have. Don't try to make more spoons. If you run out, stop using the spoons and rest because then you get those spoons back and it works. Always try harding as bad as what you mean in gaming language. What's interesting, Yesh, is that's actually pretty close to it. Try harding can be problematic in crunch, that same situation. But what's fascinating, and I highly recommend you read the stuff too, is things like decision fatigue, things like the crunch problem, uh, I, there's a second video I made that talks about this with lower, like being more productive in less time. Um, and there's even stuff about like the four hour workday. So it's weird that human beings work this way, even though it has been scientifically shown to not work. So the point of this is let's take some advice from the spoon concept. You have a certain number of spoons and you should use the spoons as a positive indicator about what you should be doing. I really like spoon theory. I thought it was really cute. And so that's our thing today. Oh, look, there's the chat working again. Hello, chat. Look at you. 
I mean, let's scoot you over a little bit because you don't need to be all the way over there. Perfect, cool. Uh, here's our wheel. Oh, that's not our wheel. Here's our wheel. It says SMG. Oh no, I removed the SMG. Don't remove the SMG. Bring the SMG back. SMG. Boop. So, we spin the wheel. It will tell us what we'll be playing with today. Hopefully it'll let us in. It didn't let us in a second ago. So we start with the crossbow. Cool. Crossbow! That's our beginning. Y'all disappeared. <laughs> hand paid, hand up, hand, yeah, exactly. Boop. So, hop into plunder trios. Start with a crossbow build. And this is the way this is gonna work though. If whenever you want me to switch stuff, tell me to hit the wheel. Now I have to get at least one kill with the thing, or maybe three. I don't know, I haven't figured out quite yet. Can we make the loadout? Yeah, we can. Uh, oh, you mean like you yourself? Well, I was gonna let the magical wheel of decisions make our loadout. Uh, but how about this? Give me a number that I should spin the wheel and then that will tell us our first gun. Or just tell us to spin the wheel. Nah, tell, give me a number. You too, Stadia. I'm gonna choose my, my, my crossbow of joy real quick. Hold on, I need to make this into the actual, like, thing for me. Not backburn, fury, yeah. Four, four spins, four spins. Ooh, there we go. Five spins, all right, so we're, we landed on crossbow. Spin again. So we're, we gotta have a crossbow. We gotta, we gotta have a spin again. <laughs> rocket launcher, so crossbow rocket launcher. Boom. Another spin again. This is interesting because so far this actually is a build. Because we have crossbow rocket launcher. Sniper rifle. Or assault rifle. Okay. So that, that'll be our thing. We gotta, we gotta have a crossbow. We gotta have an assault rifle. Uh, crossbow. No oh, we could actually just grab the rocket launcher in here. Launcher. RPG-7, Amped, High Alert, uh, Scavenger. Just add a Bankrupt option, please. <laughs> Perfect. But here's our thing, built built by the wheel and the number of spins. We got Crossbow, Secondary Weapon, this is the RPG-7. We don't need Thermite, we are the Thermite. What we would need is a Claymore. I think that's a smart choice. We are the thermite. All right. So we're running around with this. I want you to tell me to spin the wheel when it is time to spin. But I'm gonna get like, so basically I'll get a kill and you can go spin and then we spin and we have to change that first thing. Sound good? Sound works? This thing, look on the, the, the what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? Chat, what are you, what are you doing over here? You turned invisible, you're doing some funnies? You keep fading away and starting with this warning again. <laughs> go away, warning, go away. You wanted bankrupt though? I can add a bankrupt. Is that where I throw all my money on the ground? <laughs> From plunder, Just dump it all. The jump's simple. Secure more cash Tell you what attachment you will use. Um, I mean, you can try that too. But the wheel is what decides. The wheel is the great decision maker. Does anyone need this? We're going for that. But tell me, do I spin when I get a kill or not? That is the important distinction here. It came out of nowhere. I didn't know it was happening. I didn't realize that I used my parachute in the beginning. 
Great. Good start. Good start. Strong. Strong brilliance. No, remove all your spins. My spins belong to me. You cannot take my spins from me, Yesh. Ah! Yes! <laughs> Look what happens when you threaten the spins. People shoot at us. I was on the roof, huh? Ha ha! Alright. Now, Yesh, tell me. Do I spin or do I not spin? Stadia, it's up to you as well. Whoever's in chat, it is up to you. Do we spin? Or do we not spin? What do we do? What do we do? Do we spin? Do we not spin? Two people have died to us. If you guys spin and end up making me run into a situation where I just don't have... Um... No, like if you go bankrupt, you lose a weapon. Ah, interesting. I like that idea. But it is spin day today. Spin day. <laughs> nice kill, better lecture. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Enemy dropping into the AO. Uh, boop, recon. Does anyone need this? Enemy UAV overhead. All right, continuing on. Running around with explosives definitely feels like something that I do. This feels right. Secure that position. Yep. Well, no comments about spinning or not, so not gonna. S so I, I'm gonna keep my crossbow and explosion choice of ability right now. Why not? It makes perfect sense. We're even in the top ten. That's how you know it's the legit combo of skills. Bloop. Perfect. Being tracked by an enemy team. Stay sharp. Primary LZs are marked. Extract is standing by. Being tracked by a team too. Oh, they're nearby. Come fight the crossbow user. Hostile dropping into the area. Watch the skies. <laughs> All right, we good. Escape. Uh, ooh, and balloons. Do, do indeed give me the balloons. Oh, baby! Crossbow to the face. Do indeed provide the crossbow joy and the balloons. Yes, indeed. Now, before we start the securing process, we're going to find a nice save point. Drop the balloon. Spin with bongos on. Bongos with the spin. Will do. Click. Now, what do we switch ourselves to? Swords, huh? All right. Nope, wait. Oh, oh, that's swords. Okay, it's swords. All right. Next to the swords. That sounds like plan. Close. Put it away. Very good. Very good. Loadout. Do we have a sword one yet? We have a sniper sword one. I like the sniper sword. That's pretty funny. We'll do sniper swords. We'll do long man. That's going to be a good choice. Cool. Contract done. Up, oh, other friend. Oh, it's okay. Eek. Friend. Friend, I've got something I need you to hold for me. Alright. Could, could you hold on to this? <laughs> I was having trouble with the other one. So I did what I thought would be best. Oh, we're out of this. All right, I need to, or not need, but I'm going to deposit the money that I have on me so that we can switch it up and do the sword request. 
Crap. Objective updated. Secure that position. Alright, just give me a balloon real quick. I know where a balloon is, so I'm heading that way. More money, please. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Balloons. And throw the balloon out. Place. And carry on. Goodly good good. Alright. We can actually blow ourselves up real quick. And join. Just float onto the secure point. Because it stays. Yeah, let's do that real quick. Spin for a second weapon. Sure thing. One second though. Perfect. Spin for the second weapon. First weapon is swords. Second weapon is... Assault rifle? What a legitimate strategy we have here. Alright, alright. Loadouts. Uh, we're just gonna make this fast, I guess. Do it. Planet! Oh, we have a person right in front of us, too. Off we go. Oh, hi, friend! Just... Alright. Perfect. And continuing on. Swords out, it'll be better. Second weapon, assault rifle and swords. Now we got a kill, do we spin again? What's up, Alex? Alex, we have the spinning choice. It's what chooses what we will do our first and second weapons as. You tell me to spin after we got a kill, we just got a kill. You can let me know. Ooh, UAV. Happy to do so. Nobody coming. Place. Perfect. Enemy oh, oh person units. coming Enemy down right here. Solid work. Oh, let's just let's just die for a second, shall we? I think that's the way to play this game. <laughs> I'm back on the rat account. Noise. All right. Slide through. Ooh, self revive kit? Exciting. Cool. Do we spin or do we continue? Oh, to our left. Cool. Borrow that again. More stopping power rounds? Don't mind if I do. All right, where are we going with this? I hear a blue box. Enemy UAV overhead. Oh, I don't see it though. Continuing on to the recon. That's perfect. Point fixed. Pause, stop, open, continue. Recon, thank you. The mark and the area. Continuing our recon contract, will do. Oh good, it's just in the most dangerous part of the level. Cool. Alright. This is very much a let's hopefully get another balloon out of one of these on our way over there. Ball on the money? Bail. Bail on the money? Is that what you're telling me to do? Alright. There should be... So we can try depositing right there. That would be fun. Not a good choice, but a fun one. Come on, let's see if we get a balloon out of this. Oh, baby! Balloon on the money, balloon on the money. Look at, look at this, good luck. Uh-oh. This is, this is, this is good luck. Good, good luck. Keep playing it. All right, let's go. We have 21K on us still. Let's go pick up our, uh, Stopping power rounds since they're right here. Oh, is it armor box? That is an armor box. I don't need armor. I got full. Whoop. 
moving forward. Secure the point. Balloon for the mo Look at us. Look at us. Oh, you can see. Sometimes it's working. Chat is sometimes showing up. Still haven't figured it out yet. It's cool. Oh. Someone's sniping upstairs. Just real quick. Just real quick. Give them a visit. Enemy dropping into the AO. Uh oh. Time to leave. <laughs> That's fine. Could you, you know what? Just, just, just don't worry about me. Just don't worry about me for a second. I guess we should just, like. That's gonna be a hard fight to win, so I think I'm just gonna go for the recon. Just go over here. All right, we have a money box right there. That's fine. No worries about it. Continuing. Hi, friend. Don't worry about you. Just quietly. Sword money. Sword money! Enemy soldier incoming. Oh. Oh! Okay. They're all coming for this. That's fine. Oh no! <laughs> they knew. They knew. <laughs> I mean, actually, pretty obvious that they would know. All right, do we go for another? Do we go for another circle? Do we go for another spin? Okay. If I'm gonna do this, I gotta like land first somewhere over here. You know, maybe I should have gone for that sword kill, like you mentioned. Oh shoot! Who hit me from where? I have no idea where this person is. Okay. They're on the roof? They're on the roof. Hold on. We can go for a sword kill on this one. Oh no! <laughs> they jumped away! Oh. No, that's epic music. We want we want sad. Darn it. Darn it! Do we spin? Does the wheel spin? It is up to you. Alex, stay together. It's up to you. Oh, our recon's out. Bummer. Mm, now the recon. That's fine. We can move on to some other spot. Oop, first place is about to cross the million point. Sword, then double spin. All right, so you want a sword kill and then a double spin? All right, all right. Objective update, secure that position. You need to praise Elmo more? Elmo! Going for the sword. Sword kill, oh. Up to our right. Perfect. There go. Dang it! <laughs> I thought I was so sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, Nightbot got angry at you. I didn't know that Nightbot would do stuff like that. I was just experimenting with Nightbot. I put Nightbot in timeout. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me put. Ti I'm gonna put Nightbot in timeout. <laughs> I was experimenting with it because I wanted to have something that would allow us to have you hit a button and have like the wheel spin on its own. So I, uh, I, I removed Nightbot. <laughs> Nightbot said timeout. Oh, that's funny. Yash got in trouble from a robot. Nya, 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 nya. 
Look, we're in ninth place still. Ninth place with nine kills. We could technically go for the victory condition that we've been playing with. Oh, from behind. No, oh, wait! Okay, you're gonna leave. Oh, Nightbot did it. Here's a yay for you, Yesh. A yay for you. Yay. It was good to have you here. Sorry we haven't gotten that sword kill for you. <laughs> oh, helicopter. Oh no. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh. Don't want to run into that. I just want to go secure. I just. Ow! Oh, I just want to go secure. How does the wheels. the wind spiel work again? Alright. The process is that when you want me to spin the wheel, which normally involves times like, oh, I want the wheel to spin because, give me a second if you would please. Hi. Dang it. It goes like this. I died. So let's spin for the next two things. But the idea is that you guys have the opportunity to be like, all right, spin again, spin again on this particular part. Like, if you're like, oh, I want you, I like the combo that you have, then stick with it. But then I'm allowed to be, in, or I guess, and then you're allowed to tell me to spin again if need be. Yeah, no cash to deposit. <laughs> So since I died, you could be like, spin the wheel, we want to see something new. And then the wheel spins, and goes assault rifle, or sniper, or whatever, and then it's like, alright, that's the new thing. Change the sword and bye-bye. I mean, the match is about to end in 20 seconds. So, I'll just wait for a second. It'll be good. It'll be, it'll be swell. All right. Oh, look, we're in top 10 still. I wonder if we'll finish in the top 10. Let's make a nice little pace. 10th place. <laughs> All right. So right now we're running around with um, a build that was just spin the wheel and it's like assault rifle and swords. So we did that. Now. Should this be for weapon one or weapon two? For this next spin. Just number one for one, number two for two. Two is like, and the thing is if I get something like LMG, then I have to use a big thing, right? I have to use something large for that. Uh, what was it? Overkill, I have to use that perk. So one or two. Yes says change the sword and buy, so we'll call that two. <laughs> Alex has a choice as well, Stadia has a choice as well. I respond. I do as needed. Two? All right. What are we using? Dink, 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 LMG? It's a pistol. Oh, how how very unsurprising. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna use one of these with the pistol, easy. All right, and then, so the next one is gonna be for one then, right? Spin again. What do we get for one? All right, so I need to use dual pistols as the main weapon and single pistol as the secondary weapon. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to make that happen, but that's fine. We're gonna do our very best. I'm just gonna take this as an opportunity to say, uh, because it'll be easier to do dual akimbo on secondary since they're kind of just like interchangeable. I'm gonna try see if I can make that work. So let's see, what do we go with? Um, let's take this one, because this one that we've been just like messing with there's no obvious choice here so let's just start with that and then we're just gonna go here this is, this is perfect uh ooh, ooh. let's go to our gunsmith our armory there we go play the violet um, and then we have to remove the full metal jacket perk, Akimbo. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so doing two pistols. 
And then we have to find a single pistol for here. We'll be killing lots of players, so we'll definitely be finding it. I'm not worried about that. And that's been our wheel spin of the day. <laughs> Gotta use all pistols. Ooh, alternatively, if I make like a sniper pistol, which is like one of these, right? Like, that's gonna be useful. If only let us do this, like, pistol, pistol. <laughs> but I think it's gonna be easier to do a Kimbo in burns like this for any, like, mess around that we're gonna be doing. Hmm. Don't need scavenger for this. I'll do cold blooded, sure. We don't need amped because we're just using the pistols. It's tracker, yeah. I'm gonna need a knife for a little bit of range. <laughs> now, let's say we get like two or three kills with this and we're like, all right, this is too easy or too hard or whatever. Just say the word and we spin again. Well, let's try it out for a little bit. Water. All right, so, but we gotta find a pistol to replace our shield with. I'm pretty confident that'll be fine. Because players use pistols, right? There's also pistols on the ground. Oh my gosh, hold on, I want to land on this. Alright, alright, here we go. Bang, 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 bang! Oh, we hit one! We got an assist. We might want to give ourselves, uh... More ammo. <laughs> and we're out. <laughs> so sad. Such dark. Oh no! <laughs> well, let's go in here real quick. And, uh, yeah, I think I need to increase the ammunition. Yeah, we don't need to worry about recoil control. 13 round mags. Let's go with that. <laughs> Perfect. Aim down the sight speed. Oh, we don't care about that. That's, that's fine. Damage range, bullet velocity, recoil. Ah, no, we don't need that. That'll be fine. Alright. Burns it is. So we're doing our same process of where we land in this general area. I keep landing in Boneyard right now, and it's been, er, been great fun. We have players to shoot and fight, and we have things to pick up. We get lots of cash. Money, money, money. It's been working out really well. All right, so we're gonna use stopping power rounds as well because this double pistol thing is ridiculous or redonkulous, depending on how you want to speak today. All right, all right. Landing, landing. Grab that, because it's fun. All right, uh, oh, I'll reload this real quick. I'm grabbing the balloon. Is that an armor box? No, munitions, okay. Just scavenge. Another balloon, noise. Fragrance. What an interesting name for a, a spaceship to be using. Also known as a plane, but you know, it's a spaceship today. All right, nobody nearby, that's cool. We just go stroll. Hopefully we'll pick up a pistol again soon. Because we have nothing that can shoot any distance right now. We are, we are screwed in that regard. <laughs> it's fine. Look at the pretty flowers though, aren't they nice? I've actually up added some high resolution texture packs to see if I notice anything. And the only thing I've noticed is some things not loading in correctly. So, you know, glad to see that it's not working. Can't do any of those. Next building. Got the lasers. Want us to go, they just... Oh, hey, there's a car. Uh, pistol? Pistol, pistol, pistol. No, pistols. Oh, that's a nice wall rug. That's one of my favorite things about this game. It's just randomly in the middle of, like, people dying. You're like, have you noticed the rug? Alright, 
Don't turn around. <laughs> Who did we assist kill? That's funny. Alright, there's just this person running in front of us. Oh, flagrance is what they call the plane. I, I, I just can't... Like, these bullets won't do anything to someone running like that. I needed, like, a stun grenade or something. But I like using the heart rate monitor over that, so... Brr. It's also known as a heartbeat sensor. I closed the door on myself. You gonna give me a pistol that I can use? No, you're not. That's great. More stopping. Again, not what I needed. Up we go. Pistol? Nope. But UAV, that'll do. Request recon flyover. Go. Good. Why? What the hell? There's not even players over here. Can I drive this? This almost seems like it was once a drivable car. That's interesting. This is, I always find, the funniest parts about some of these quests. Like, this is a great way to get players moving around and stuff. But they literally just have me go back and forth a little bit. Which is why I sometimes prefer the recon. <laughs> but I was hoping something would give me, you know, like a tool that would provide a little bit more of a... It's like... A pistol! We got the armor satchel, which is nice. Precision airstrike, which is also nice. And we're now in the top 10. You know, that's cool. So we can deposit with the balloon. Still smart. Do another scav. It just might take us out of here. Oh, and the, the main person's this way. Uh, I think... Hmm. Ah, eh, we'll do scav. We'll do scab again. Maybe it'll take us in the right direction. But we can also do... Oh, we're running in the direction, actually, of the people that is in top place. Well, that's going to be a lot of fun. Enemy soldier incoming. Oh, it wants me to go the other way, though. And players are going to be running and flying through here everywhere now. Because they're looking for numero uno. You know, I've never really thought about the idea of just chasing after Numero Uno myself. That's probably a really good way to do some of these as well. Being tracked by an enemy team. Stay sharp. Ooh. They're going to have an easy kill. Probably we're running into them right now, because this is normally the area where one gets into fights like that. Yep. Yep. Cool. Cool. If we can get the drop on them, as opposed to the other way around. Oh, there's no pistol again. Oh, they went the wrong way. Good for them. Keep looking. Looking for pistols. They seem to have given up on us. Put up. Uh oh, to the right. E. Joe's curve is up because it's getting dark so late now. All right, we got that one. Oh, darn it! It's getting dark so late. I was getting to bed earlier, and I'm waiting for the damn dryer to. To finish to put his PJs on, it's already done. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Alright. So we got our stuff. We lost about 20k. It's fine. We can now fall to our spot. Um. Maybe I should have deposited. I did have another balloon. Whoop. Oh, they're all there! They're all there again. Ah! 
We'll just have to run. Hope for the best. What is this? Your team is already on a contract. Cool. <laughs> Shoot. They're going after us some more. Sorry that they're already dark for you in the pajama situation. I had to drop on them. I came in through the door. I started shooting at them. Now that looks pretty good. That looks a lot better. Yep. I would like to spin the wheel again if I'm allowed to. <laughs> Just a personal preference. It might be worse, but it'd be nice to shoot at people from afar. <laughs> You know, what I could do is I definitely chose the Akimbo because I assumed that it would be easier to find um, a pistol that is like just a good using pistol. But I think what I need to do is just actually switch ourselves to a pistol itself that I can use. Because those were the two options, it was Akimbo or pistol. And I think I might want to just do that because the pistol itself, I mean, it's going to be much easier to do. Open to see how dry everything is dry. It's just carrying on for no reason. You know, sometimes the dryer just wants to feel useful, right? So it just keeps being getting dry. Let's get the helicopter and we'll go do the, the deposit -y thing. It'll be perfect. You don't grunt. It doesn't really count. Nice. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling like I'm gonna have to switch it to just like use a pistol as a single weapon. The dryer's pushing his luck. <laughs> I like that idea of the right. He's like, don't you do it, dryer. I know your type. It's going in for a nice landing. Uh, I'll take myself a cash deposit balloon. Thank you. Go for a bounty run. That'd be pretty funny in a helicopter. I'm unstoppable up here now. Oh, that's a cool looking gun. Target <laughs> This is loader two zero. Copy. Let's strike away. Oh, one of the top players is in that direction. That might be another fun way to do this. It's just hunting for the top players to get their cash. I've never really played it that way. Because it requires us to, like, do helicopters and stuff. Positive ID on the bounty target. Sort them out. The Going for the other player. Bounty target is cool. Well done. Poached. Do it a supply run. <laughs> Oh no. Ah! Take that. Oh, we still aren't picking up any other of the pistols. This has been an interesting version switch, though, of turning this game into just like doing these fast run chores. Changes say experience. I've seen players do stuff like this and they have it be like one of the best ways to actually go for wins. I still think it's most fun to do it the way that we've been doing it where we like find a spot to do quests near where a lot of players fight. Better be piloting the helicopter than the last time? You know, is it truly better or is it just not as dramatically horrible? <laughs> that would be better. I guess my thought process is like, it was still so fun. 
Alright, I have a balloon here, so I guess uh, I'll take a self revive kit. Pick up more cash. Pick up more plates. Oh, are they blowing up our helicopter? Seems fine to me. Yep, it's still fine. <laughs> That's funny. I love that idea that the hel someone's going for the helicopter and it's totally fine. Hold on, can I do this? Let's see, hold on. Oh, it will work! Oh, that's awesome. I'm excited by that. Hold on, I want to watch that go up, too. Alright, here it goes. Two. One. Oh, it just goes through. I thought I heard a player. That's funny, it just goes through the wall. It doesn't care. It does what it wants. We have enough money for another balloon launch, though, so let's just uh, do that again. It was instant death, so after many good plays. Yes. Apparently it's only letting me do it over here again. I wonder if it's actually registering that the window has been destroyed up there. That's pretty fascinating if that's the case. Good job coding this game. Game designers. Technically. Also, this place is full of cash. I'm pretty impressed by. Oh, stopping power rounds. Switch. I still hear chests in this place. There were so many. Medical swap. There's another one. Definitely pop in the glass. You'd think it would. Wow, there's another one. There's our pistol. Nice. <laughs> we finally have another pistol to round out our situation. All right, we're in second place right now. Pretty good. Do we still have that helicopter? We still have that helicopter there. Might as well go for that, I guess. Pick up some other quest. It's just fine. It's doing great. Could be a bounty. That could be fun. All right, we're in second place. First is really close to getting their full, their full success. All right. How, how can I do this without killing myself? Probably like this. Put this up here. Yep, there's a little ladder. I hit the class, it goes straight back down. Yeah, I can see that happening. Up. Later. All right. We've got a bounty. Let's go after, oh. No, we don't. I feel like the supply runs are just the way to go with the helicopters right now. It's easy. So I've seen players talk about like, to actually win plunder, this is the best way to do it. I, I think this is definitely the best way to win plunder. I don't think it's the most fun way to play plunder. But I'm having fun experimenting with different ways of play. Race to the buy station. There's also other perks we can get. Oh, people are shooting at us. Other perks we can get that will give our character more money whenever we complete one of these missions. It's called Point Man. I think it takes the place of High Alert, which is why I never use it. There's people to our left. Are you like the helicopter? I think it's fun. I just saw the player go over there. Um, Alright, let me just plop this down, fill it up. Surprise, we're not being shot in the back right now. One discount item, please. I will take... Oh, no, I don't have enough money to buy one of the balloons. That's fine. This should give us enough money to buy a balloon. Perfect. Hmm. 
Continuing on. Let's see, this, this location of the chat. Still kind of floaty. Still don't know how best to do this. Go for another bounty, though. Bounties and plunder are funny, because a lot of times the player that you're going for just gets poached. It sounds like I didn't land very very correctly. I think it's fine. Alright, they're this way. Oh, there's a player right here. That's not our bounty, though. Oh, is this their bounty? Whoop, I missed. That was our bounty. <laughs> Thank you, game. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Well, this is why we own a self-revive. It does cover Almighty Elmo's face. Ah, brilliant. Good to use a balloon now. Perfect. We're actually pretty close to first place. Enemy soldier incoming. Ah! Scavenger accepted. We have a lot of cash on us, though. Deposit it? I say no. I say no! I say we go for a million. If we get a million, we don't need to worry. Get him through this window. I think there is an enemy up here. Oh, okay. We'll find out shortly if we can shot the butt. Oh, bummer. We didn't hit our million. Second place is good. But we didn't hit our million. It was just a good bounty land on the dude's head. They were like trying to escape. Escape from people coming to bounty them. But we showed up and we ruined that. 23 supply boxes, eight contracts. That was fun, all right. First or second? Ask and chat again. First or second? Then we spin the wheel. And that makes our decision. I was disappointed with my decision on doing going for a Kimbo over going for the other pistol, because I could have used that actually as a tool to fight opponents. Some of the revolver shots can actually take out opponents in three, three chest shots. Oh, I got a free weapon. View the battle pass. Yay! Oh, we have daily challenges. Get eight kills with a rare weapon. Four times at Verdansk Stadium. Alright. Since I have yet to have a response. I mean, it doesn't take too long to actually change. But I'll, I'll have to do it eventually. We'll have to spin the wheel. And then we'll do the lecture again. Because it was a fun lecture. I liked it. Alright. I'm just going to do it because I hear the countdowns. Here we go. This is for Uno. Let it spin. Oh. It, it, it's giving us a gun. Oh, that's okay. I figured, Alex. I was basically asking um, one or two. It was basically what I was asking. And so I just decided one. Because I was like, oh, we'll just spin. We'll find out. Spin. And so this will be for two. So we got assault rifle. Spin again. 
I needed to come up with something else because it had two red blocks next to it. Because it's so it's like okay. All right, could be you. All right, so we got to do an assault rifle with akimbo pistols. Cool. Well, let's uh, I guess. Let's see what? I guess we'll do this guy again. And we'll switch out some handguns. Hmm. We can do the Ceresta thing again. Nah. Nah. We're gonna do this. Enemy soldier incoming. Ah, uh, fair enough. Oh uh, yeah. Boop. The Damien Akimbos. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, but... I want to change this guy up a little bit. No, no, no. I don't... <laughs> no. We got this. I can do this. This is the new game. Just me trying to figure this out. Gunsmith. Oh, don't. Don't. Oh, we haven't already built one. Alright, that's fine. You know what? Ah! Back to the armory. We'll do this. That's fine. There, look at them. They're beautiful. The job's simple. Secure more cash than the enemy. All right. Set a drop point for your team, soldier. Helicopter again. Helicopter here. Close. Remove. Let's do bounties first they thing. Going for the bounty. I think what I want to do then is find an item, like a car, and then see if we can go for the higher point players as an option. Oop. Objective is to eliminate the bounty target. Apparently our bounty is here. Enemy UAV overhead. Ow! Go for the player. Ow. Jerk. Was just gonna ask if you knew what was up? Yeah, that was what was up. Woo! Enemy UAV overhead. Take the bench, take the trash can, over the wall. Nice, look at us. We got a nice whatever it's called. Alright, let's keep moving. Oh, grenade launcher, that sounds like fun. But that's not what we're using today. Dual pistols. Oh, they're in this building, it looks like. Alright, there's a person to our left somewhere. An armor box would be sick. Hostile dropping into the area. They're up high. Balloon would be nice. Another balloon would be nice. I'm gonna do a quick balloon deposit. <laughs> I know I'm nearby, but now at least I'll be safe with the money deposits. Oh, they left. Dropping into the area. Watch the skies. Oh, they're still moving. Back. There they are, the bus. Yeah. <laughs> I thought would be really interesting is if I just unload everything that I had available to me. Uh, shots like that into the 
into the bus and just be like, this will be fine. Let's not worry about a thing. It'll be fine. Alright, more balloons. More balloons, please. Enemy soldier incoming. Bounty target identified. Slot I don't want to be going with this much cash, but I also want to be going with this much cash. Oh, they're coming to us. Make it easy. Nice. Did not need to do anything for that. Oop, car coming by. Another bounty. Nice. Hostile dropping into the area. Watch the skies. I just want balloon. Helicopter flying overhead. Another person in here. This is where balloons were. He's now drinking milk. Gotcha, gotcha. Good night, Joe. Oh, shoot, they left. Head to the superstore. Fine, I'm looking for balloons anyway. There's got to be a balloon in here. Bounty's poached. There it is. Found our balloon. Good, yes. Load up the cash runes. But I'm told you to say goodnight, and he says goodnight back. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that. For more balloons. Everybody's still on the roof. This person is very close still. Probably in one of these buildings on the roof. That might be them right there. That was them right there. Nice! Is someone on the roof right now? Aiming at us? Oh, they're coming. Oh, load, they coming. Oh, they're gonna try to go for a flank, are they? Oh, he's, I don't think he's going for me. I think he's just here. Hostile dropping into the area. Watch the skies. Blank steak, maybe. Oh, I did that poorly. 
I almost died from that, and I had all the right information. It was just poorly done on my part. Target marked! Send it! This is loader 2-0. Good copy. Cluster strike away. I just thought it'd be funny to cluster strike the building. Still no balloons. Balloon? Yes, balloon. Oh, on the roof. Hold on, let's see if this works. Target marked. Send it. This is loader two zero. Good copy. Cluster strike away. Just gonna see if we can kill them from underneath them with the cluster strike. That would've been fun. That didn't work. All right. Bit danger, but that's fine. Safer than being on the roof. Good. All right, they're still shooting up up at top. Enemy dropping into the AO. Okay. Enough players still landing up top. Person behind me. Stairs we go. All right, I think we're good. This is one of my favorite positions now that I think about it. Because you can get up from upstairs, but most likely they're gonna try to come through this area. It's a very good opportunity. Good, good aiming place. Well, I don't know why you were there. Go. Enemy soldier incoming. Another player. This is another balloon situation. Would like another balloon, please. Oh shoot, there's a player here too. All right, hold on. See if we can do this again. Target marked. Send it. This is striker three one. Good copy. Strike it back. I love trying to do these strikes from inside the building. No hits on that run. All right, let's. They're fighting each other. Perfect time to peek. I, I saw the flash. I should have just ran. I didn't. I, I knew it was happening, and I didn't do it. That's okay. But that's a lesson learned. Definitely a lesson learned. All right, quick check. Uh, I want to deposit my cash runes. I either need... Um, ooh, there's people this way. Oh, they're in, they're in the top, aren't they? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, this person who's right there. That's not a team wipe.
I'm just gonna leave. Oh, yeah, baby! It's a balloon. All right, just be safe. Enemy soldier incoming. I don't see the soldiers coming. That's that's gonna be money. Ask me some cash money. Enemy soldier incoming. There's a couple players up there. Alright, if I do this right, I might be able to avoid getting sniped by the people up top. And get the money. Hostile dropping into the area. Watch the skies. All right. What I say? Slide down, grab, and get. All right, we got some more cash. Any balloons? No balloons. You get a sniper rifle, which would be nice in this situation. All right. Oh, goody. They're on the roof. Oh, bad choice. Whew, that was an unfortunate choice for them. Being tracked. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no! I thought that was going to take too long. And I was right. And I was right. That's fine. That's fine. Where are we? We're at 151 in the cash. Drop to a buy station right here. I feel like that's just a nice safe spot. We can just put some cash down. Honestly though, we're gonna be pretty safe from anyone, which isn't quite as fun. But we'll just start picking up a little bit of monies and heading back in once we get the, the, the balloon. Nice, nice, nice. I already picked up enough cash to buy a balloon. Plop it in the center, nice and safe. Try that again. There's nothing above it. Perfect. Cash is full, pick up more cash. UAV, munitions, cool. Now what do we got in front of us? Car, and a bunch of other bounties to do. We also have the choice of heading this way, so desired. Players just to our right to fire him. We'll find out. But either way, we'll do this, we'll do the lecture, Feel good. We got a minute to go. More cash. Jump. I'll drive. Hmm. Does anyone need this? Start heading in. Oh, that seems fine. Forty seconds. So the king is somewhere over here. That doesn't mean that they have the most money on them. It means that they have the most money overall deposited. Which is an important distinction. <laughs> Alright, cash, cash, cash. Pop. Request 
Falcon flyover. Yep. UAV entering the AO. Where are we right now? It's eight seconds. Okay. So we ended sixth. Bounty target identified. Slot the bastard. Yeah, I can parachute over that. That was useful. Cool. But it's interesting to play plunder a little bit this way, where it's more focused on the different pieces of money, and I like that. There's this part where it's like, like the decision there where I poked my head up instead of running as my moment when I died, I think is interesting because that's like, in a lot of, like in normal Battle Royale, that would be where I would like stop playing Battle Royale, right? I'd be dead. Uh, but in this game, it's like, okay, like you can keep playing. You just, that was you missing first place, right? Which I think is really interesting and why I kind of like Plunder better because it's like, you're still not winning, but you can still to continue to play the game. Anyway, I want to talk again about uh, our spoons today. So today's discussion is on a couple of things, but primarily spoon theory and willpower. So spoon theory, I learned from a friend of mine who deals with, um, uh, anyway, she has a chronic disease. And the idea is that when you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, it takes a spoon to get out of bed. And then you're like, oh, and then it's to get dressed, can take another spoon, brush my teeth, get breakfast put the plates away after having breakfast. All these things cost spoons. Spoons are units of energy that people have a finite amount anytime that they start a day in it. So you're going out, you're like, ooh, let me do this spoon for walking out of the house, spoon for talking to a friend. And sometimes even these spoons that you're doing, even if they're not necessarily something that you would normally count as work or hard, it can, till, it can still take a spoon, right? So when you're doing different things related to the spoon life, uh, it's important to make sure that if you run out of spoons, you don't push yourself to keep getting more spoons because naturally human beings only have a limited number of spoons that they're able to put into anything. In fact, there's a bunch of terms for if you go beyond your spoon amount, one of which is decision fatigue. It is well studied and understood that people make worse decisions if they're tired of making decisions after making decisions all the day. So if you've had to make lots of hard decisions, then smaller decisions are still difficult because it takes physical energy and focus to make decisions. You can build it up like all things, but it still has a limit. Even the fastest sprinters still have a maximum that they hit, right? Like, yeah, they get better and better, but it's not like they can just willpower spoons into the world. Speaking of willpower, willpower is like this. It's like a muscle. You have a physical amount of willpower you have available to you any day. And if you use it up, you have to rest, otherwise you can't continue. Willpower works very similar to that running analogy that I made where eventually you run out of energy and it gets tiring. And if you keep pushing it, you don't get more out of it. You don't run faster because you just tried harder to run faster. No, you, your body stops, it fails at one point because we're biological creatures, that's what happens. And that's kind of the process here. We're being biological creatures. Sometimes you wake up with a ton of spoons in the morning, and so you can do tons of things. But sometimes something happens and makes you lose some spoons, or something happens and gains you some spoons. Maybe there's something you really weren't looking forward to having to do, and then you called a friend, you're like, could you help me? And they're like, sure. And basically you did a spoon exchange, right? Where they like to do that thing that you don't like to do, and now you both have more spoons. So this comes up for me a lot because of work days. So I get this information from working with Monolith Productions because I worked with a guy who's charged or who's in charge of doing efficiency work at Monolith. And basically the process is you'd have teams predict how much time it would take to get certain projects done and then they would present it to him and then they would keep track to see how closely they were able to hit those targets. 10 hours to complete a character, 20 hours to code this thing, whatever it was. And then the idea is that you'd have a line and you'd trace the correctness of like how much did you get to the required hours of time done and this allowed people to learn how long it took them to do things and what they could actually predict they'd be able to complete and it was also useful because you can then say it takes a thousand dollars an hour or whatever to make this thing happen so it takes 20 hours it's going to take twenty thousand dollars to add this thing that was the idea so with that process i just made up a number by the way anyway with that process the idea was like, okay, well, what they found was in an eight hour day, people really only work about six and a half hours. Only about six and a half. Because that other hour and a half is done to things like going to the bathroom, talking to your friends, walking into the building, starting some email, like whatever it is, an hour and a half of your time in an eight hour day is just breathing, just existing. Then after that, there's an hour for lunch. 
Yeah, and it was found that if you were cutting your lunch short, it cut into your work in other ways. You were less efficient, or you just wasted time, or you just didn't work, but you sat at your desk, right? It's like the idea of you eating at your desk and watching YouTube, rather than going somewhere with people, enjoying a meal, because one looks like you're working and the other one looks like you're not. So an hour for lunch. That leaves a five and a half hours of time based off of the research that was done. And what's interesting is you can see included in the links down below, Gama Sutra did research on crunch in the video game industry. Basically, this is the stuff that's like, work more than eight hours a day in order to make this game complete. And they talked about if this was a good idea or not a good idea and did a bunch of interesting research for it. Their facts, or excuse me, their findings aligns with what we found in Monolith. We're basically six and a half hours because people are and a half do other stuff, one hour because of lunch, and then finally, people generally work about an hour and then need about a 20 minute break. That's generally the process. So if you work for 50 minutes, 20 minute break. If you work for an hour and 10 minutes, 20 minute break. But what that turns out to be is in five and a half hours, so if you go like, okay, here's an hour, cool, of work. All right, that cuts down our hour. All right, here's another, and then it was like, oh, we need to do a break though. So it kind of cuts it in half. And then you do another one. All right, I'm trying to do half things here. Basically, you work about four hours a day and then all the rest of that time is breaks in between those hours of working. And that's what peak efficiency looks like. That's the part that's wild to me. It's because of things like decision fatigue. People run out of the strength to make decisions. So if you try to push the person, they just stop doing as efficient work. People will start like losing their train of thought, rereading sentences. People will start being like, I don't want to start anything. And they'll waste time to start something because they don't want to start it because they don't have the rest to do it. So by giving yourself more rest and more calm time, this 20 minutes of break, that hit peak efficiency. So in any period of a perfect day, you have four hours, four core hours of working to do. If there's a meeting that cuts into that, that's that's not not work, that's still work. So if someone's like, oh, we have two hours of meetings a day, that's two of your work hours are taken by those meetings. And that's how that works. And it's fascinating because like, you'll go through the day and you'll still do like those other two hours of work, but you still need those extra 40 minutes of break from those two hours of meeting stuff. And that's peak efficiency. There was an example I gave where it's like, if you were to clean like a park because your job was to like pick up trash or something, uh, one of the things is that if they're like, oh, just, you know, if you can get this park done in eight hours or in four hours, we'll pay you the same. Well, you're gonna try to get it done in four hours. That's something that makes a lot of sense. Alex, yes, spoon theory is something you've personally been using for years. I always always use term spoons, but it helped me cope better when I was first diagnosed with fibromyalgia. I just can't say that thing still, but yes, I learned it from a friend with chronic, it's, it's a thing with chronic pain, as Stadia talked about, or chronic disease, as my friend and yourself, Alex, have talked about. The point being is that it works for people even if you aren't dealing with any chronic disease or anything. I mean, it works for everyone. And it's something that I'm really glad exists because it's helpful for people who are dealing with chronic issues as well as helpful for people because sometimes being alive is a chronic issue, right? Like it takes time. And so the idea is that people like that who aren't necessarily dealing with all these extra things benefit from the spoon idea because it helps them relate to other people as well as makes them more efficient because it turns out the people overwork themselves. And what's interesting is in this research about how much time you have to work, it showed that you could actually work more hours in a day and that when you did so, you did actually get more efficiency for about nine days. Nine days, you can actually get more efficiency. And if you continue working like 10 hours a day rather than eight hours, as in crunch, which is where the research came from, well, it turns out then you would work about eight hours of production in about 10 hours of time. You got less efficient. And then if you continue to do it on 11th day, 12th day, third day, you would just keep going down until eventually you were being worse in production time than if you had just only worked eight hours. So the argument was like, crunch makes things worse. It doesn't make things better. Now, taking this idea is after crunch, you even need to rest kind of thing too. So you can hustle hard. Those do exist. And we've all experienced hustling hard, but if consistently hustling hard and consistently hustling hard is more than four hours, you lower in productivity, you lower in success. And this stuff has been researched consistently. Point being, one of the issues that we're running into is that park example. Some places are like eight hours of picking up trash and then you like pick up trash slowly, right? Or pick up trash as quickly as you can get out when you're done. These things are important to consider because the one that's like, oh, you're done, you finished your work, you can go. 
that stuff people tend to be much more efficient in figuring out solutions for because they then rest and get rewarded for that action. So the point of this, spoons. Pay attention to your number of spoons in the day. Make sure you don't overdo it. It's okay if you have less spoons. I have sometimes the situation where I'm like, I'm gonna make a video today, but I don't have the spoons for it. This happened, I recently got my second vaccine shot for the pandemic. yeah, fun. And I've been kind of tired. I've been legitimate kind of tired from it. Uh, sitting and doing a performance like this has been fun for me, so that's this is less spoon cost, but it's still taken effort. Point being that I haven't gotten as much stuff done as I wanted, but because I only had a certain number of spoons, I can only get a certain number of stuff done. Spoons, useful metric. Check out the stuff below about like this Gama Sutra, which is actually pretty big. I also have a thing about four hour work week, excuse me, work week, work day. Uh, I personally can't get everything done in four hours. And I don't necessarily want to not work because I like doing stuff like this and having fun making videos and things. But I definitely like the idea of the four hour work day with having some days off for, you know, other stuff. Anyway, that's the lecture, using the spoons. A lot of you have actually experienced it before. It was one of my first times experiencing it yesterday. Thank you. Any questions, any comments? And uh, give me a one if you're like, I got it, cool. And a two if you're like, I need more. But I believe it was Stadia who was here before. And Alex, straight up, you just went, I got it. I, I know this, if that makes sense. All right, spoon day. Now I would, I would finish up with something like going into multiplayer and doing a gunfight, but I haven't been able to fix it still. I've done so many things, so many different things. Uh, uninstalling and reinstalling, it's still not doing it. I've researched it and it seems like consistently the idea is like, it just, it just exists in some places. And I, I wanna go reach out to, like find someone to talk to, customer service to be like, it's just, I'm missing part of the game today. <laughs> and I want them to be able to be like, we're sorry, Tr try these things again. Or, all right, it's on hill. So on hill, which is what's behind me right now. Uh, oh no, where is it? Uh, I'm trying to show it off. Anyway, this level that is loading, I haven't been able to play on. So, I'm gonna just do this, try again, and see if we can make it work. But yeah, I wanna be able to talk to someone there and just be like, hey, I just I can't play it. Like I get it, sometimes you turn these, they don't work, but docs I should, I might be able to play. Anyway, we'll try one. Because I dox, I might be able to play. And if I can't, I'm just gonna turn it off. I'm just gonna go. Figure out my exercise. I think I wanna try to work more on video stuff today. Cause spoons, I have more spoons available. Match started loading level, not a good sign. Oof. Speedball? I think I could do speedball. I think speedball does load. Fibro Malaysia. Fibro Malaysia. Said it right. Fight, nice. Just a nice, relaxing picture. Oh, I meant to do, darn it. Well, that's kind of cool. Hi. Thumbs up to you. Triggers pulled, let's go. Shoot. Forget that round. On to the next. Shoot. 
there. I probably should have kept going in that circle. Oh, that was a cool slide. Shoot and shoot. Got it. When I'm dealing with my family, I never heard of fiber before. Gotcha, Alex. I'm really glad that you had access to that. That would have been something that... I think it's just, it's just a good thing to share. I shouldn't have kept going. Like, I saw them for a moment. They saw me. They were ahead of me. Yeah, I just walked into that. That was pretty close. Oh, they got hit with a grenade. I would do streams of this, honestly, for some of it. Just want it to work. It's been taking some spoons from me, trying to get this to work. Oh, good grenade. Nice. I died for the team. I was helpful. Had them. I couldn't quite see, but I knew the general area. Going in. Oh, I thought they would die in that first shot. Whew. Look at that health. Well, they won. Well, that was impressive. Oh, they hit them with a grenade. And they were probably low from that first shot, too. Well played. Sides. This is match point. One more win. Let's see it. Oh, I even knew they were in there. They were sighted down. Ah, oh. I did that incorrectly. My nine doesn't really show. I know that helps other people with fiber. Oh, that's nice. She was thinking of you. That's that's a putting putting some spoons for you. Cutting out articles from the paper for you. Ah, oh, that's nice. I'm glad that she was doing that. Demonstrating care as people can. We also won this, which was nice. Unrelated. <laughs> Made me happy. Everyone else was getting job listings. That's funny. <laughs> All right, we'll take a moment to stream starting soon to end, to chill. Turn off console. I'll continue my quest to get Call of Duty to be the thing that I want it to be, maybe one day. But until that day, it's okay. I'm gonna close this up. 
I, I think I'm going to do some sort of bike ride today because I think that seems like a good, nice exercise that I could do post, uh, post dealing with tiredness and <laughs> fatigue. But I'm happy that I've been, gotten that final boop, so that's very good. Anyway, y'all have been lovely. Alex, I'm really happy to hear that your family has been more supportive with you with, like, dealing with fibro. I'm going to call it fibro because I still can't say fibromalacia. My, 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 my glia, I can't say it right still. I've even looked it up, so I'm going to do it again, and you've already showed me how to do it before, and I'm sorry. Oh, fibro. <laughs> Pronounce. Fibro Malaysia. Fibro Malaysia. Cool. Anyway, I'm glad it was doing stuff to help you. So, anyway. I'm gonna go. Stadia, it's nice to see you. Alex, it was nice to see you. Tomorrow, one of my favorite uh, book series that I've been listening to recently comes out. It's all good. Just stick with the fibro. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, one of my favorite book series uh, and audiobooks coming out tomorrow, which I'm excited about. And I'm also pretty stoked about... Um, I have a class happening in about 20 days. That's going to be cool. So I'm going to be good. I'm excited. All right. Thank you. See you, Alex. See you, Stadia. And to anyone else who is still here, goodbye. <laughs>